Welcome biology students to section four of molecular genetics dealing with mutations, gene regulations, and something called GMOs. So when we talk about mutations, a mutation is a change in the genetic sequence. So like right here, this is what we should have had, but oopsie doops, there is a letter. What effect does that have? So let's look at them. So during replication, there can be mutations. We're talking thousands and thousands of, of base pairs, and to get it perfect isn't always going to happen. Um, DNA polymerase, however, the enzyme that's responsible for that replication, bringing in those, those free nucleotides, the complementary base pairs, does a really good job, and it does it very quickly. However, it does, it, there are mistakes made sometimes, and depending upon what type of mutation, it is, may have no effect, um, or may have some type of effect. So um, when we talk about mutations, this is an important thing to think about. A lot of times when we think about mutations, we think about them being like lethal or deadly or very harmful. But remember that sometimes a mutation could be helpful or have absolutely no impact at all on an organism. So the idea is sometimes these harmful mutations can lead to things like cancer, but, 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 some of these beneficial mutations are the driving force of evolution and how organisms become more adapt to their environment and are more likely to survive. So just kind of keep that in mind. Mutations aren't always like awful, terrible, horrifying things. So when we talk about mutations, um, there's often they occur spontaneously or they can be caused by something. So sometimes Mutations just happen, but sometimes it's the environment that we live in that have led to some of these. So when we talk about these spontaneous, it's just something that happens. And the oopsies, there's a mistake during the replication or during mitosis or meiosis. However, the idea is could be caused by something. These Sometimes if we are exposed to certain types of things for a long period of time in our lives, the idea is these mutations can be caused. So smoking, radiation, UV rays, uh, x-rays, I'm sorry, I underlined the wrong thing. Those are things that we know have enough energy to alter genetic sequences or DNA sequences, which then could lead to mutations. Can smoking cause lung cancer? Yeah, data suggests that it can. If you're, you get too much UV rays, can that lead to skin cancer? Yes, we, we, we know these things, right? So that's what we're talking about when we talk about cancers. There's often some type of mutation. But keep in mind, cancer isn't always caused by something. Sometimes they are spontaneous. Just keep that in mind. So different types of mutation. We really are focusing on two different types of mutations. There's something called a point mutation, which is exactly what it sounds like. A mutation occurs at a point, right? a single point, one letter changes, whereas a different type of mutation is called a frame shift. So the entire sequence gets shifts, shifted over, and we'll, we'll kind of examine those a little bit more closely. So point mutation, like I said, is a single point. An example is the big fat cat ate the red rat, right? That is a sentence. So if we say, hey, there was a, a single point mutation, we change at only one position, this, this, a, this C in cat becomes an A, the big fat at ate the red rat. Okay, it's still, you know, notice how they're all three-letter words, and you'll hopefully catch why, because we're talking codons and anti-codons and amino acids, right? So the big fat at, oops, that should have said cat. It affected, how many words in this sentence did it affect? It affected one word and one word only. That's called a point mutation. So right here to right there, a single point was mutated. So what can happen with a point mutation? There's a couple things that could be silent, it could be mis um, missense or nonsense. So the idea is we don't code for words, we're coding for amino acids. So sometimes the mutation could have the exact same amino acid code. And we're gonna, in their in-class examples, we went through some of those and say, hey, look, there's a mutation. However, it didn't affect it. So CAA codes for the amino acid glutamine but CAG also codes for glutamine. So it had absolutely no effect on it. Was there a mutation? Yes, but it had no effect on the amino acid sequence. Therefore, the protein was the same. Therefore, the trait expressed was also the same. But sometimes a mutation uh, codes for a different amino acid. So instead of being CAA, it becomes CCA. There's still a point that it was mutated, but now we get a different amino acid. And it could be some type of 
harm or effect, but it doesn't, maybe it still folds the same, maybe it doesn't. We don't really know. But sometimes we call them nonsense, and what might happen is instead of putting a bunch of amino acids, still a single letter um, point mutation, but instead of saying glutamine, it says stop. So instead of having this longer sequence of amino acid, all of a sudden that's cut short, which is going to have a pretty big, pretty significant impact on that protein that we're supposed to be making, and that's a pretty serious thing usually. So that's called a a point mutation. It occurs at a single point. A frame shift, however, and we've talked about these in class already, I know. Um, A frame shift mutation is a mutation that shifts the entire frame, because remember, we read three letters at a time. So these are normally where we added or deleted a base. So instead of it being CAT, TCA, GCC, okay, we have a single letter, right? This it should be GCC and is GCC. But when we look at three letters at a time, codon or anticodon, this is a very different thing. But what effect did it have? It affected everything else down the line. Okay, this is an example of something called insertion, where something is added. Now, we could also delete it, where we could just say, well, let's chop that thing off. But then again, we are reading three letters at a time. So, when we talk about frame shifts, they're pretty significant normally. They're pretty drastic effect, generally speaking. So, if this is our original uh, sequence, if all of a sudden we have a mutation that caused a, a, a frame shift, the idea is instead of going... ACG, now it's going CGA, right? It shifted everything over. So now we're looking at these three letters are these kind of shifted over. But when we took look at the amino acids that we should have, every single amino acid from that point on is different because we shifted the frame over one. Okay, the same idea is if I were to delete one, right? This G is now gone. Uh, I'm sorry, where is our... mm, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't, know. I don't see the it off the top of my head, but now we're coding for this GAG is my thing. Again, these are the amino acids we should have. However, these are the amino acids we get. Every single amino acid is different. It has a pretty significant impact on that. Now, when we talk about mutations, keep in mind that we as humans, not male gender, but as humans, mankind, we make mutations. And there are these things called um, GMOs that we go through and we, we hear a lot about in food. But as scientists have learned more about these mutations and how they can evolve um, a species along, they have started to experiment with this and they do something called gene editing. We can do it in humans, we can do it in plants. So when we talk about GMOs, GMO stands for something called gem- genetically modified organisms. And a lot of the food we eat is a GMO. doesn't mean it's bad. It's just saying that we've altered the genetics of it. Now, there's different ways we can alter the genetics food, the sequence of things we can do in the laboratory, or we can do some other things. And whether selective breeding is considered GMO or not, I guess that's kind of a slightly uh, up for debate. But there's also this newer technology called something that they can use CRISPR. And CRISPR is this gene cutting editing tool that we'll talk about in a little bit. So both GMOs and CRISPR involve humans altering the DNA of an organism. And the idea is to gain a trait that we desire or we want. So a better yield on our crop. If you're a farmer, you want to make the most money you can on your your, your crops. However, if you can increase your yield so that one stalk of corn that you plant can produce more kernels of corn, that's good for you as a farmer because you're selling corn, right? So if you can produce more corn, that's, that's helpful. So GMOs uh, are very common form of biotechnology. And many food we know has been genetically modified in some form. For example, here's what we know as corn. This is what they started with. Um, gosh, to tell, no, to, I'm, I'm forgetting the term, um, what the crop was called. Tatalic, um, talic, I don't remember. It's an ancient, um, crop like pre uh, Christopher Columbus era of of um, like a grass kind of thing and this is the kernels of corn that they said hey that looks desirable and then through many 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 let me emphasize that generations 
they selected like, hey, this crop is, this one is a little bit better than this one over here. So we're going to breed this one with the next one. And after many, 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 many generations, we have what we know as modern corn. There's also some things that we can do in the laboratory to create something um, that is genetically resistant to disease. For example, the rainbow papaya is one of the huge um, agricultural crops of Hawaii, and it is largely uh, still around today because GMOs, and they modified it for some disease resistance and yields. So there's this last thing, this is kind of relatively new, I'm gonna say in the last couple of years, there's this gene editing tool called CRISPR, and there's a different form of gene editing um, I don't remember what it is. CRISPR is the big one we often hear about. But essentially what they do is like, if here's our genetic sequence, and they say, oops, there's something wrong right here. Let's cut that bad part out. Let's remove that. And then let's fix this and then put it back in. Kind of the idea. It allows researchers to easily alter, and easy, easily is relative, but the idea is we can specifically target a DNA sequence, and we can modify that gene function. So some potential applications is we can correct genetic defects. If you can't produce a certain enzyme, they could fix the part of your genome, your, your DNA sequence, that then fixes that so you do produce that enzyme. Okay? It could be used for treating or preventing the, the spread of disease and improving crop yields. Okay? And the idea of CRISPR was thought to be something that would be avoided for the human genome because of some ethical issues. Um, this doctor right here is, I, I mentioned it in my class, uh, I'm not sure if Mr. DeGrand did or not, but they actually have gone through and um, there's a couple of examples back in 2018, there's an article that we may give you to read that they actually go through and he edited the, the DNA sequence of humans prior to them being born to prevent HIV is what he claims. Now, one of the side effects of this, they believe to be um, above average intelligence. So again, definitely some ethical issues involved is, is this a good choice or is this not a good choice? So that's the idea of gene editing and CRISPR. Uh, and it's something that is in our lives today. And we're going to continue to be hearing about and moving forward and potentially changing the, the genomes of different organisms, perhaps humans. Have a great day.